I mean, Mac, thank you very much for that presentation. <laughs> Dr. Menikoff, we turn to you. Jerry Menikoff is the Director of the Office of Human uh, Research Protections, OHARP, at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. His office is responsible for protecting the rights, welfare, and well-being of subjects involved in research conducted or supported by HHS. Mac. And, yeah, Mac, we need you to turn your... Oh, it's mine <laughs> off. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and his office helps ensure that such research, human subject research, is carried out in accordance with the regulations described in the common rule. In addition, OHAR provides leadership in the protection of human subjects participating in this kind of research by providing clarification and guidance on the regulations, developing educational programming and materials, and maintaining regulatory oversight. And prior to joining uh, the federal government, Dr. Menikoff was the, uh, an associate professor of law, ethics, and medicine at the University of Kansas. It's a delight to have you here, Jerry. Take, take it away. Thank you. Well, thank you for the privilege of, of addressing you, and thank you, more importantly, for the work you're doing on this important subject. I could echo Dr. Lumpkin's points that we look forward to your inquiry in this field, uh, and it's certainly, again, highly relevant to what my office does. Uh, Dr. Gutman noted earlier in terms of Guatemala, you characterized it as egregious, and I'll certainly echo that on behalf of, of HHS. Uh, horrible things happened, and we are as committed as any other part of HHS to making sure in the future that no such thing happens, and in fact that things that are far, far less horrible aren't happening either. So we view this as a work in progress and a partnership, and I'll, I'll tell you more about that. Uh, I'm in a fortunate position. Christine Grady gave such an excellent presentation earlier on, so you already know a lot about what my office does, and so hopefully I can be brief and allow more time for questions. Uh, so let me make a, a few points just sort of clarifying and amplifying on some of the points that were noted earlier. Um, what is within OHRP's jurisdiction? Because, in fact, it's very different, in fact, than, than FDA's jurisdiction. I think that's relevant to the questions you're addressing. Uh, in particular, the core part of our jurisdiction relates to HHS-funded research, uh, regardless of where it is conducted. Um, on the other hand, the biggest part of that generally is NIH, and by and large, NIH, at least on the extramural side, is not doing a mind-boggling amount, percentage-wise, of, of research outside of the U.S. My understanding is it's within a, a couple of a percent, so it, it is not huge. Fortunately, you are collecting information about this, and you will have a lot more information put together in one place than has existed up to now. Uh, let me just give you the other part of, of our jurisdiction. There's a phenomenon that was noted earlier called checking the box, domestic institutions, but not foreign institutions, are allowed to voluntarily submit themselves to OHRP's jurisdiction on all of their research, regardless of funding source. And two-thirds of the institutions out there, again, just domestic institutions, do voluntarily do that. That gives us a huge amount of authority over a great deal of research that is not HHS funded. Again, almost all of that is not international. It's largely domestic. We would only have authority over stuff happening in this country, or at least uh, over research that is done by personnel of these institutions, and most of that is within the U.S. Let me say a little bit about the rules that are enforced by OHRP. Again, you've heard a lot about this. Uh, OHRP enforces the HHS version of the common rule. Uh, this is a rule that has been adopted by sort of in a cookie-cutter fashion by 17 different uh, divisions of the federal government. They each have their own authority to enforce it. So, again, our authority is limited to the HHS-funded aspects of that. Uh, the common rule does not in any way at least in terms of its core provisions, distinguish between studies that take place within the U.S. and studies that take place outside of the U.S. Again, the core issue is, is it HHS funded? Um, that said, uh, the rules do have provisions that, again, have been noted already relating to what is commonly called equivalent protections. And uh, this is a very important and common sense concept that basically... Um, HHS, similar to any other branch of the federal government, doesn't have the absolute best answer to what protections are adequate in terms of protecting 
participants in research studies. And so the regulations contemplated that there can be circumstances in which it would be determined that the procedures or rules of some other uh, organization or, or laws uh, are adequate. Um, now, up to now, OHRP, or more broadly HHS, since the secretary makes these determinations, has not made any determinations that a particular set of protections are equivalent. But we are well aware that research, as Dr. Lumpkin has noted, is becoming more and more international. And we certainly, again, acknowledge that there aren't just one set of protections that are adequate. And we have actually been actively working for quite some time to develop criteria for determining equivalent protections. Um, by doing this, we don't want to actually exacerbate problems. And so to pick, on a, pick up on a theme that was noted earlier, uh, we're very engaged in being harmonious these days. We could envision OHRP or the secretary setting up some standards for OHRP regulated studies that are somehow different than FDA standards, because FDA has already been engaged in something essentially similar. And therefore, we are working very closely with FDA to hopefully come up with rules that are highly harmonious. So you do not end up having two sets of standards to apply here. And I think this gets back to another theme that was echoed earlier, um, that the rules, it, it isn't just about compliance. The heart of this is about ethics. And I think from the viewpoint of somebody in another country, whether or not you're exploiting them or not, it doesn't matter necessarily whether or not it's an issue that it was a federal government funded study or on the flip side of that, that it happens to be a product that the only reason the product is being studied uh, according to a certain protocol is because the U.S. is the gorilla in terms of being the biggest market out there. And we know these companies are not about to engage in a study unless the rules will comply with, with FDA. So the bottom line, we think there are basically similar ethical rules there, and, and we're very eager to come up with similar standards uh, in terms of FDAs and recognize, again, that the U.S. doesn't have the clear answers to this. And we certainly welcome your input in terms of this. So it's wonderful that, that you're discussing all of this. Um, let me say a bit, since you were interested in, in OHRP's involvement with international research, in spite of the fact that it's a small part, percentage-wise, of, of our regulatory scope, we actually are very active in that field. Uh, the division of – we have – uh, four divisions. The division of director has a subunit uh, that is specifically dedicated to international activities. Uh, the deputy director of OHRP is actually in charge of that subunit, a recognition of, of the importance we give it. Uh, we publish, uh, this gets back to a question raised earlier, we publish something called the International Compendium of Human Subject Protections. Uh, it's right on our website, so if you just Google OHRP, you could find it. It has the rules relating to human subject protections for over 100 countries. Uh, we are regularly uh, adding countries to that, so everybody should feel free to take a look at that if you, if you want to find out more about that. Uh, we regularly, members of our division, regularly meet with people around the country, uh, interact with with researchers, with regulators, uh, with uh, bodies representing governments across the world. Division of Education and Development uh, responds very openly to any inquiry about the rules, about guidance, about how to interpret something. We're very free about answering questions, and about 5% of its responses actually relate to international inquiries. Uh, Division of Policy Assurances, uh, for one thing, drafts, changes in terms of policy and guidance. It is very engaged right now in terms of what I indicated earlier, what will be either in equivalent protections or waiver rules that might accomplish the same thing. Again, we're, we're very interested in that. Uh, we also register both IRBs and create uh, federal-wide assurances, and there's a, a large international character to both of those. Of the 6,000 IRBs that are registered with us, about 2,000 of them are outside of the U.S., so about 37 percent, and of the nearly 11,000 approved federal-wide assurances, approximately 2,500 or 22 percent of those are from outside of the U.S., uh, and finally, our Division of Compliance Oversight investigate complaints of noncompliance 
and again, assuming the right things are alleged and we see merit in the complaint, we will investigate something regardless of where it is taking place. Um, and I will note in particular in terms of not for cause investigations, when we go out of our way to look into a particular institution and see how good a job they're doing, over the past five years, approximately 40% of those have been directed to international institutions, which is way uh, higher than the actual probably percentage of, of international research that's within our scope. Um, so let me just close with, with I, what I think is a key point, um, and I think it's similar to a point that was made earlier. Um, no single office or branch of the government is in a position to really make sure that everything is working. And what this really is is a partnership, a partnership amongst governmental units, both within the U.S. and outside of the U.S., um, within um, funding agencies, uh, within researchers, uh, within subjects. I mean, everybody works together. And in terms of this <laughs> partnership, I could tell you certainly in terms of NIH and, and HHS-funded research more broadly, we work very, very closely with the funding agencies. And in fact, they, they are often to feed on the ground in terms of paying a great deal of attention to what is happening in terms of research. Um, again, this is certainly a work in progress, but um, it is a strong system, not a perfect system, but we welcome input, and, and we're certainly major theme is we are very engaged in improving the system because I haven't touched on a number of issues that might be tangential to the issue, issues raised by Guatemala, but the system certainly does need improvement and we are very, very interested in improving it. I'll leave it at that.